Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice depressed cubic equation. We have x cubed minus 8x equals 8 and we're going to be solving for x values. We're also going to be looking at the graph of this function and check the intersection points. I'll be presenting more than one method and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to talk about the cubic formula, which is something you should definitely know. So notice that if we cube a plus b, we get a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab, a squared b plus 3ab squared. Well, we can factor part of that. And then if we subtract from this the terms in the middle, we get a cubed plus b cubed, which is the sum of two cubes. If you continue to factor the a plus b here, then you'll get another expression for a cubed plus b cubed, which is not what we're looking for. We want to keep it as is. Now, this equation is going to help us solve a cubic equation, especially the ones that are depressed. Now, what do I mean by a depressed cubic? I mean, there's no x squared in the equation. Okay, that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and set a plus b equal to x. And then our equation becomes x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed. In other words, one of the roots of this cubic equation is a plus b. But that's just one of the roots. What about the other ones? Well, to find the other ones, you can just go ahead and do polynomial division or some other stuff, whatever, right? So here's what we're going to do, though. Since x equals a plus b is a solution, we can kind of make our equation look like this, compare these two equations, which means 3ab is equal to 8, and a cubed plus b cubed, which is the constant term, is equal to 8. Okay, from here we get a system of equations that looks like a cubic system, but it's indeed quadratic because if you go ahead and substitute or you can cube both sides here, for example, a cubed b cubed is going to give you what is 8 cubed, right? That's 2 to the 9 power, which is 512, and 3 cubed is 27. Now you can go ahead and isolate a cubed or b cubed. Let's say we isolate b cubed and write it as 8 minus a cubed. Now this is something you can substitute here, which will give you a cubed times 8 minus a cubed equals 512 over 27. It's not a very favorable number though, but notice when you distribute, you get a cubed and a to the sixth power. So by setting a cubed equal to something like c, you can get a quadratic equation from here. Let's put everything on the same side or maybe the right-hand side, it's going to look like this. And then guess what? With the quadratic formula, this equation can be solved, and then you'll find the c values. And one of the c values is equal to a cubed, the other one is b cubed because of symmetry. Then by cube rooting those values, you can find the values of, of, of a and b. And then by adding them, you get the x values. That just gives you one solution, very painful. But if you think this is painful, look at the quartic formula or even the quintic formula. Wait a minute. Is there a quintic formula? No, it doesn't exist. Too bad. Okay, so that's one way to do it. I'm going to leave it as is because that's an exercise for you. Okay, let me know what you find. Second method. Second method kind of uses an idea that I could probably call the, what's it called? Rational root theorem, RRT, right? So what you need to do is you kind of put everything on the same side and then look at factors of negative eight. Uh, they can be positive or negative. So plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus four, and plus minus eight. Because eight is a power of two, all factors are powers of two, including one, which is two to the power zero, right? Cool. Now we can test these out, whichever one gives you a, a zero, right? That will be one of the solutions. But again, this takes a lot of time, right? If you don't um, if you, you have a lot of candidates, I mean, you have eight candidates, so you have to test them all. Hopefully at some point you're going to get the solution, but let's do it. I'm going to test X equals one. By the way, if you know the, the story about some of the coefficients, you probably know, no, X equals one is not going to be a solution, right? But you can quickly plug it in one minus eight minus eight, obviously it does not equal zero. If x equals negative 1, it's negative 1 plus 8 minus 8. Again, does not equal 0. Pretty close, but not 0. 
What about 2? Okay, you can test x equals 2. 2 cubed minus 8 times 2, 16, minus 8 does not equal 0 either. But this should give you a clue. Look at that. 8, negative 16, and 8. If the second 8 was positive, we would get a 0. What does that mean? Hmm. Maybe we're really close to the answer. What about x equals negative 2? Negative 2 cubed is negative 8, plus 16, minus 8. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a solution. Great. So x equals negative t, negative t, negative 2 is a solution. How do you proceed with that? You can definitely do a couple different things. This means x plus 2 is a factor by factor theorem because that's what x equals negative 2 means. What is going on with this? No, we to think. Okay. And then you can just go ahead and divide by x plus 2 and you will get the other factors. So how do you divide? There's a couple of ways to go about it. You can just do long division. Do you like that? I don't. But you can do it. It's not too bad. Or you can just um, manipulate the factors so that every two terms have uh, x plus 2 as a factor and you can go from that. That's what I usually do. But since I don't do this very often, why don't we just go ahead and give it a try? That's going to be fun, right? So now x goes into x cubed, x squared times distribute. You're going to get x cubed plus 2x squared. Next thing I need to do is negate, negate, and add. These two are going to cancel out. We're going to end up with negative 2x squared minus 8x. That goes negative 2x times. And if you multiply, distribute, whatever, you're going to get this. And then I'm supposed to negate and add, which means subtracting, right? That's going to give you negative 4x. Bring down the negative 8. Now you have it exactly negative 4 times. And we have a zero remainder, which is expected, right? I mean, you should get a zero remainder. Otherwise, x plus 2 is not going to go into that. But we, do, we know that it does. So here's the other factor, x squared minus 2x minus 4. In other words, x cubed minus 8x minus 8 can be factored as x plus 2 multiplied by x squared minus 2x minus 4. By setting each factor equal to 0, we're able to find the solutions. Very easy. From here, you know we get x equals negative 2. And from here, by using the quadratic formula, we get negative b plus minus 2 squared of b squared, which is 4, minus 4ac. Four, 4 plus 16 is 20. That's going to be 2 root 5. Let's just go ahead and write it that way so that we can simplify easily. x equals 1 plus minus root 5 are going to be the solutions. Of course, negative 2 is another solutions. solution. So this cubic equation has three real solutions. That's awesome, right? Let's go ahead and talk about the third method. And we can even talk about a fourth method for this problem. You know what that is? Let me just tell you because I'm not going to go into the fourth. But let me just tell you real quick. The fourth method is going to look like this. You can basically assume that, okay, this can be factored into x plus a times x squared minus plus bx plus c. One of the things that you need to be careful about is x cubed. Uh, there's no x squared. So the coefficient of x squared is going to be 0. So hopefully you're going to get some equations from there. And by finding a, b, c, or by guessing, because that's going to be factors of negative 8. But it's pretty similar to rational root theorem. But eventually you're going to find the values. Make sense? Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method real quick, because I think you're going to love this. But again, I could be biased. Let me know which one you think the best. Or, I mean, did I say think? You think is the best. Or which one do you, th do you like the best? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and add the 8x to both sides. Now I'm thinking, as it is, it's not factorable. But wouldn't it be nice if I was able to add 8 to both sides? Because you know why? Because this would give me x cubed plus 8, which is sum of two cubes. And this would give me 8x plus 16, which is factorable. How? This would be x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. And this would be 8 times x plus 2. Then I can go ahead and bring this over here, take out x plus 2, so on and so forth. The rest is fairly easy to do. So go ahead and finish up. A lot of good exercises I left for you. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.